Hi, I am Arun Kumar Khannor, software professional, consultant and trainer. Today we are going to discuss on agile software development, agile methods, scrum approach. After attending this session on agile methods with scrum approach, you will understand and appreciate key practices in extreme programming and you will understand and appreciate how key practices in extreme programming relate to general principles of agile methods. First, we shall discuss on introduction to scrum approach. There are different types of approaches that have been put across by different practitioners across the world. However, a specific approach for Agile by name Scrum is the most popular framework for Agile implementation in projects. Scrum is an iterative incremental framework for managing agile projects. We have different roles in scrum. We have got scrum master who maintains the scrum processes. We have got product owner who represents the stakeholders and we have team a group of about seven people. The team does the actual development, analysis, design, implementation, testing and so on. In Agile, most of the time we focus on small and medium sized projects with a small teams of up to maximum 20, ideally it will be around 7 to 10 people. And also, Scrum is an iterative and incremental framework, means we are initially starting with the product backlog, conventionally whatever we call as requirement specification. Here, we specify the same requirements by the name product backlog means list of requirements that need to finally reflect in a fully blown product that we build after many increments. So, in product backlog all the features that have to be developed have been put in and they have been submitted to scrum team. Now, scrum team picks up these product backlogs, they go for intensive discussion and split these product backlogs based on the priority by involving the customer and also what is the business value we may gain out of that. All such points are being discussed by involving the customer and end user based on that the product backlog has been split into sprint backlogs. So, each sprint is one increment, what should go in first increment, what should go after that in the second increment, all such things have been decided upon and they have been documented as sprint backlogs. Once we have this sprint backlog, then we start focusing upon implementing sprint and iteration in the scrum development and usually maximum two weeks we take in some of the larger projects it may go for a maximum one month. So, usually we recommend it two weeks one sprint. Here what actually we do that has been 
pictorially shown. Initially product backlog comes to us. From the product backlog the all the stakeholders will be sitting with the and they discuss by involving the customer and this product backlog has been split nicely based on the business value and based on the input from the customer into sprint backlogs. Sprint backlog is having a well defined set of the requirements. Then the team is going to discuss upon which must be considered first for implementation, which must be considered after that and after that which one shall come like that it has to be prioritized and for that purpose customer is always willing to involve himself to contribute his views. So, once we pick up one sprint the team will be implementing it with maximum 2 to 4 weeks within a maximum 2 to 4 weeks then after that they put into configuration management tool. Now after taking this particular sprint backlog what happens? Now all the stakeholders the functional specification person, customer representative, end user, then designer, then programmers then product managers, scrum master all such people are coming together. They will be sitting together and discuss about the approach how to implement the backlog sprint backlog they have taken. They may be talking about uh, what is the technology that need to be used and what may be the ideal approach to implement this particular the, pro the sprint backlog and how much documentation shall take place and out of these sprint backlogs when the team is splitting into different tasks the developmental tasks who is taking what how much time do they take and they may be giving their estimation towards design towards coding and how many rounds of iteration by when code may be freezing all such discussions are taking place with lot of iteration the what you call the seamless communication with the interactive sessions. Once that decision has taken place then team is going back and they start working for the entire one day and after one day they come back and at the end of the day there will be stand up meetings. What went right as per the plan, what went wrong where to improve upon is everything is going as per plan like that in a stand up meeting the teams are exchanging their views voluntarily they may be taking some other responsibility if one is ahead of the activities and if one thinks that he can really add value if another person thinks that he is having a major bottleneck and he may be having a lesser competence to implement it voluntarily he will be disclosing it and then entire re strategy takes place and team will be working to implement next course of actions for the next day. At the end of the next day once again team will be meeting and they will be discussing like that they complete two weeks they go on working and working and working at the end of the two weeks they must complete all the activities and motivated team with lot of creative exchanges for ideas with a final product the completion is working with the higher level of motivation and complete the tasks within two weeks they complete the total activities and then that will be coming into configuration management as the first increment work product and it will be deployed for the usage. Then we take next sprint backlog then proceed then we take sprint backlog 3 then we proceed and put into out the output into configuration management tool like that work will be progressing. Please remember people play very crucial role here documentation is only on the teams views and relevance. Now if you have to implement this 
then we have to depend upon the approach called extreme programming. What are the key practices we observe in extreme programming? So, what is extreme programming? That we shall consider first. Extreme programming is perhaps the most popular agile development methodology that uses good practices of iterative development that provides the highest value for the customer. Basically, extreme programming is supporting the iterative development and all the best practices of the competitive and capable people will be put into practice here to deliver business value to the customer. To, the, to, that, to do that particular thing, a set of values, a set of principles and practices for rapidly developing high quality software must be put in place. In order to do it, extreme programming is uh, having its own characteristics. It wants to keep always end user in mind. It always wants to deliver the workable product. To make it happening in the real environment, the extreme programming considers user stories as the basis. It makes use of pair programming for coding and uh, it makes use of test driven development or test first development as the basis for testing and refactoring frequent integration to go on improving and improving and improving the code so as to get the most value from that so that code shall not be outdated, work product shall not be outdated and it should not defragment. So, like that they think about and consider refactoring of frequent refactoring with frequent integration. Now, key practices in this particular scum approach and extreme programming that we shall consider first. First principle is incremental development. As I mentioned earlier, the product backlog will be considered and it will be prioritized by taking the inputs from the customer and end user and we are going to pick one the backlog which is called as a sprint backlog and start implementing first increment. So, it is an incremental development with each increment maximum 2 to 4 weeks. It is well supported through small and frequent releases of the system with the help of requirements that are represented as functionalities in the form of user stories. So, here we are not going for the big, big, big documentation, huge documentation. Instead of that, if the product is going to be deployed or if the product is given to the user, how is he going to use it? How he starts the entire software? the mode in which he may be supplying the inputs and how the system is reacting for that and what are the expected system behavior and if you have to do that, how to proceed all such things will be considered. So, incremental development using user stories with focus on customer and end user is taking place here. Customer involvement is supported means whatever we do ultimately it has to appeal to the customer. The quality of the end product is not a byproduct of the processes. However, it is nothing but the customer's acceptance to use our product. That is the mindset which is operating in agile method quality is defined from the eyes of the customer and end user, not through processes and uh, possible non-acceptable variances and such things we do not consider here. So, customer involvement is well supported, representative of end user of the system and customer 
shall involve, engage and constructively criticize and also define and prioritize requirements and developing acceptance test for the system. In all these activities, customers and end users are playing very important role and they go on specifying this is the way I expect system to be evolved, this is the way the system has to behave, these, these are the color combinations I am expecting from you and if the system has to be successful, these are the tests it must undergo and all such a wonderful contribution along with which requirement has to go first, which must go after that like all such things will be decided upon. Next point comes about the importance of people, but not processes. Agile and scrum and extreme programming. These are by very nature are keeping the people above the processes. The value that every person who is capable, who is competent, who is skilled, who is working in similar projects for longer time is a real asset to the organization as well as the project. His wisdom which has been earned over the years will be playing very crucial role in the success and he should work and contribute with no ego. Egoless individuals are going to be a key players in extreme programming. So, such people, but not processes is supported through paired programming, collective ownership of the code and suitable development process that discourages long working hours. We should not exploit the human resource here, we have to ask the people, motivate them to work for the specific day by sticking to the office hours. We should not extend their work. So, motivation of the team and contribution of the team always will be high when stress is always less. So, that is what we are using here. Next principle is change is embraced through regular and frequent releases to customers. Test first development, refactoring to avoid code degeneration and continuous integration of the new functionalities are being used intensively here. So, change is happening very frequently, technical platforms may change, requirements and expectations of the customer may undergo changes there can be pressure from the competing company and competing product which may be forcing us to incorporate additional requirements. All such things are coming as a change and we have to ensure that in extreme programming which is one of the approaches in agile and part of scrum. We must accept this and change is a continuous phenomena even late changes also must be accepted and they are to be implemented. Team must find the way to implement it. That is the next point by continuously changing it, by continuously upgrading our code, we ensure that code is always relevant, it does not degenerate, it does not get outdated. Next principle is maintaining simplicity. So, extreme programming supports maintaining a simplicity which is one of the characteristics of agile methodologies. We should not go for too much process mindset, we should be always working product delivery mindset and we have to continuously refactor so as to add more and more value where to improve the code quality and by using simple design that do not unnecessarily anticipate for future changes to the system. Now, with these 
particular characteristics, we shall move towards extreme programming principles, which is actually a part of the scrum. Scrum intensively uses extreme programming principles. First principle and practice is about incremental planning. Here we take requirements, we split requirements into different user stories. If we have to implement requirements in a nice manner, we have to always try to understand how the final product is going to be used by the end user. We always look at the product from the usage point of view. By considering factor, we split the requirements into user stories and we record one user story per story card. And then we prioritize it. Out of these different user stories, which one is very crucial? To make that decision, we will be involving the customer and end user. After prioritizing the user stories, we take one user story and split into development tasks. And uh, all these activities are not done by the project manager or scrum master. All these are being done collectively by the scrum team. They are actually involving with lot of uh, commitment with the responsibility by taking the accountability and then they suggest about the development tasks and also who is going to take, who is the right person based on his competency and skill and capability that also team will be discussing and the development tasks will be picked up for implementation. Second one is once we pick up the user story and arrive at the development tasks, we have to aim at always small releases. We should not take too many user stories. We have to always take within two weeks how much we can implement upon. So, it is a small releases in an incremental way we have to release. Minimal useful set of functionalities that provide business value need to be considered and it has to be developed first. Frequent and incremental development and release of the product shall be the key. And third one is simple design. We should not make a design activities too much complex in the name of innovation, in the name of making advanced technology, in the name of something. We should not do it because our focus is quick release. Within two weeks, we have to give the workable product at the end of every iteration, which we call as sprint. If we have to do it, we should always aim at simple design. Please remember the we are design centric here means design is always implementation centric whereas, software architectures are scalability and futuristic centric scalable maintainable all such things are coming as characteristics of architecture. But agile by very nature is a design centric approach with the focus on implementing and providing the solution in the form of very small releases using very simple design with the very less documentation only relevant documentation only we are going to consider here. The next thing is as far as testing is concerned the extreme programming focus on test first development. Here whatever we create must be good. Because of that internal structure of the coding with lot of automation, my making use of unit test automation framework is a major emphasis here. So, unit test automation framework must be implemented and we have to use lot of test scenarios and we have to provide them as the basis for validation before commencement of implementation and coding. The beauty in uh, test first development is test cases are being specified and they are given for design team and implementation team. The product has to successfully 
pass those test cases. Test cases are not hidden, they are not being done as a closed activity, they are being done as an open activity and they are being shared with a lot of transparency to other people. And next one is refactoring. So, refactoring is uh, ensuring that code will not degenerate. Here, we want to continuously refactor the code as and when scope of the improvement comes. The scope of improvement may be coming by other team members requesting for changing it or we may, may come across different best practices in the market and we try to incorporate or we might have attended some conferences where somebody has made the presentation by making use of good practice then we want to borrow it or we may be referring to our internal library of the organization which is sharing the good practices we want to borrow it like that we may be change requirement may be coming from many sources and we try to use it and we refactor the code so that the code should not degenerate but it should be always effective so we go on improving code continuously and extreme programming uses paired programming. Here, the two developers will be combined together. We make different uh, uh, teams with uh, two developers working in team 1, team 2, team 3 like that we make it. We make them the one developer is actually coding, another developer also is coding, then they exchange their ideas which, which in is the better, better practice where they can improve upon all such things they are going to exchange seamlessly and they interact and they are going to pick the best of the practices and they want to implement it. Next principle and practice in extreme programming is collective ownership. We do not have role specific responsibility here. We make the entire team accountable. People who are seamlessly interacting to contribute their views are going to play very important role. So, we encourage people and contribute to make the code as well as design, implementation and testing the product each and everything must be improved upon. So, we always encourage continuous integration in extreme programming as soon as the work in the task is complete then it is integrated into the whole system and after they, they proceed. So, this is going to be the next point means once through collective ownership the people are coming out with a good end product at the end of one sprint we put into configuration management tool we build and release it. Then for the sprint two another one is coming we put into configuration management tool and we integrate it and deploy the new integrated version. Now, the third sprint we pick up and uh, we come out with work product. This work product is integrated with uh, earlier to earlier work product and then we deploy it. Like that continuous integration and releasing the incremental the, that particular increment which is available in the form of work product is being ensured. This is the next principle and practice of extreme programming. Then sustainable pace of the team is very crucial. One of the very important principles in extreme programming is we should not overstretch the team. We have to encourage, we have to motivate, we have to involve, we have to engage the team, we have to respect their professional judgment, we have to encourage the teams to work beyond ego. For all such things we are ensuring in a sustainable pace. And we are involving the customer and end user whatever work we undertake in the project. So, on site customer is the next principle and practice. Here, the customer is talking about schedule, effort, and cost and quality, which he expects, and he also prioritizing the requirements, he also specifying and contributing in creation of the test scenarios. And we also involve the end user. End user is uh, actively participating and uh, providing a lot of uh, insights about uh, creation of the user stories. All these things are coming in the form of the extreme programming concept. 
Now, in the extreme programming process, the life cycle of uh, how the process looks like. So, life cycle of extreme programming include a very light weight process. We are not going for intensive process. We are not going to make the roles very rigid. We are encouraging the people to contribute by looking at the value that we generate to the customer. So, processes always light weight, but uh, people and their involvement will be very intensive. So, we targeted towards engineering teams means engineering is very crucial and uh, we try to focus more on design and implementation. So, we focus on adaptive to changes, change from technology front, change from customer expectation point and pressure from the competitors will be ongoing activities. If we have to ensure that our work product has to be relevant in the market, then we must accept change as a continuous phenomenon. All these things are accepted in the life cycle of extreme programming. Extreme programming works out very effectively for small and medium sized project teams that is 3 to 20 members. To make extreme programming to work effectively, communication between development and testing team shall be enabled all the time. Means what is being created and whether it is effective, is it having good practices, are there any scope for improvement and how can you make a code to be effective with no degeneration and in what way you can add more value to the customer. How can you make the product more usable? All such things are being discussed continuously between development team and testing team. Please remember development and testing team are not working only to validate the product with requirements. They are always are looking for how can I add more business value? How can I make the product more usable? How can I make the customer to accept the workable product? So that those points are going to play a very crucial role here. So, how it works? As soon as we decide to implement extreme programming process, first we have to start with our planning. To do planning, requirement specification document which is called as product backlog is coming to us. And we take this product backlog and we are going to split into different sprints which are nothing but uh, different iteration. What we have to take in first iteration, what we consider in the second and we involve customer and end, end, end user in prioritizing that one. After taking it, then for these uh, the different uh, iterations which are coming as a sprint backlog 1, sprint backlog 2, sprint backlog 3 like that, we are going to write user studies and we study these user studies and then we prioritize which user study the story has to be picked up first by involving the customer and end user. So, once we pick up the user stories, then we decide on the which iteration this user story must be considered. After picking up the particular iteration with the user story, first activity that we do is adding test scenarios for those user stories. If we have to consider that end product must be successful, it has to fulfill the user story and it has to successfully get through the user story when the user end user is working on the product. So, involving the customer and involving the end user, we are going to add tests. After adding the tests, we circulate those uh, test uh, scenarios to all the team members. We are not going to keep it uh, aside, we, we, we transparently share it. After taking this particular test scenario, the designer as well as the coders are going to build the code. So, this code is built by having good knowledge about the test which it has to pass. Then on such a code which is being developed with a good knowledge about test scenarios and user stories, 
we run the tests on that built code. If the test is successful, we make little change to the code based on the inputs, so that it should not degenerate, it should go on having more and more value. If it passes, then we are going to add some more tests and to check whether the particular the code which is being built is really stable. Once all the tests are being carried out, when the code complete takes place, which is the decision taken by the team, not by the customer and end user. If all the team members involving the customer and end user decide that the product or the code is being built and it successfully completed all the tests, then we want to bring it to the configuration management tool. So, when it comes to building the code, running the tests is coming, then we make use of pair programming here. What is the meaning of pair programming? So, here pair programming in extreme programming approach is nothing but coding that is being done by pair of developers. So, the two programmers are periodically switch their roles. First one is uh, building the code, second one is sitting next to him and reviewing it or both of them separately build the code and they can benchmark it by searching for the good practices and they learn from this. So, like this either one can build the code another may test or both may be developing uh, the codes and then they may be uh, what you call exchanging their best practices. Either of the two things may be taking place. It is one's comfort which one is going to be used. And then they change their roles. If we pick the things that one is developer, another one is a tester. Now, when we pick up the next development task, we make the person who tested earlier a programmer and who worked as a programmer, we make him as a tester. Like that, we go on switching the roles. The pairs also change often. Sometimes, if we are having one pair, then we may be separating the team. The first programmer we combine with some other programmer, second programmer we combine with another programmer, so that they can learn much more than one to one. We they can learn with uh, one to many exchange of ideas and good practices. By doing this, we ensure higher quality code. We continuously uh, continuous cross training is happening, and it improves uh, team communication. The pairs are determined while iteration planning is taking place. Who should go and work with another one? Here, lot of activities have to take place. We have to check whether the trust is there among the pair whom we are going to uh, actually form. If trust factor is missing, if there is ego clash is happening, then we should not join them. So, we have to consider many human centric uh, attitudinal issues while deciding who should be paired up with whom. So, in the pair programming, continuous integration and small releases play very important role. The code from each developer is regularly integrated with the code of other developers. All unit tests are then run successfully. Most of the time, these unit tests are actually uh, automated intensively. Code is normally integrated multiple times per day and acceptance tests are run daily to reduce occurrences of major integration issues at later point of time. Means, we are proactively addressing the issues that may crop up in later phases of our development activity. Acceptance tests as I mentioned, they are run daily and frequent small releases happen at the end of each iteration. So, whenever we release such a workable product at the end of each iteration, it is a workable product. The people can really work on it. This gives an opportunity to showcase the progress to the customer 
more frequently the customer gets and more more and more belief and trust on the organization which is building that software in addition to that the customer may be having more chance to provide his use continuously but not at the end of the project feedbacks from the customer are then incorporated into the subsequent subsequent iterations so that the product what we are going to release shall be more attractive and quite convincing to the end user and customer when we do such things refactoring always plays very important role so the here what we believe is once we complete the code then code shall not be baselined but it should have ability to undergo changes so that it can be relevant forever in order to ensure it we go for refactoring here code is being considered when each iteration is in progress towards small releases so there can be continuously changes may be coming changes may be coming out of uh, exchange of best practices or review comments or customer feedback or end user feedback or another team member may be giving or we might have come across some research where the good practice is being used i mean the changes may be coming from many areas so we decide to incorporate such changes so that the code that we generate should be always relevant so refactoring allows this to happen it always forces to look for some changes into the code so that it should not code shall not degenerate but it should be always relevant so also changes will be carried out on test cases as well as to align with the, these changes we have to ensure that this is what we are carrying out in refactoring and this cycle continues until the module is developed then comes acceptance testing acceptance tests are black box system tests here we are more focus on the what you call behavior of the product customers are responsible for verifying the correctness of the acceptance tests and reviewing the test scores to decide which failed tests are of highest priority acceptance tests are also used as regression tests prior to a product release a user story is not considered complete until it has passed all its acceptance tests means whatever testing we are doing it we keep user story at the core the acceptance test score is published to the developer it it is the developer's responsibility to schedule time in each iteration to fix any failed test like this continuous inputs continuous uh, improvement of the code so as to ensure that code continues to be relevant with uh, changes by incorporating changes is taking place here then the code that passes the acceptance test is integrated with the code of other developers like this by continuous integration we are going to arrive at final system and by nature the final system is not a single shot creation but it is a continuous evolution testers will execute all the system test cases and log the defects with respect to that module or iteration which are fixed immediately when we do all these activities lot of coordination among the testing team and development team is taking place testers are co-located with developers and analysts in order to understand the business hidden requirements user stories so like this because uh, the analysts are having a better knowledge about the business scenario and they will be providing their inputs to the development team and testing team and also if possible they can train the people on the business related uh, the terminologies and other things so everyone takes a collective responsibility here we are not working with uh, tu tu mai mai scenarios if something is going wrong then the team will be voluntarily accepting their ownership and try to address it 
more empowerment is given to individuals here. Individuals are working seamlessly, there would not be any uh, boss and uh, subordinate role here and all are working with a single mindset on how to generate value to the end user and customer and also make the product uh, business relevant. With that objective only they are working and they are not uh, trying to work to please their bosses here. It was also made sure that effective communication happens between the team member by daily meetings. There are stand up meetings which will be taking place. They are quite uh, taking place in an informal manner and where the people are encouraged to exchange greater ideas. They may go out of their role and they can contribute to others. All such things are happening in the daily meetings. The knowledge is then available across the entire team so that they can improve upon. So, agile methods with the testing in uh, how the testing place take place in extreme programming. The key features of testing in extreme programming are test first development, incremental test development from user stories shall take place and user involvement in the development a test development and validation plays very crucial role. And we try to use as much automation as possible in extreme programming. So, extreme programming uses test first development. Here test first development or test driven development also known as test first programming or test first development is a testing methodology associated with the agile programming. It is evolutionary approach. Here every chunk of code is covered by unit tests which must all pass all the time. We use as much test automation as possible. We try to eliminate the bugs right from the code level. So, in the in this one the test the driven development or test first development concentrates on designing and developing one requirement at a time. After the requirement is implemented it is tested and if test fails the it is undergoing refactoring and correction. So, regression testing, load testing and te stress testing all are being covered in test first approach. Focus is on correctness, structured and modularity and documentation. These are being considered as quality characteristics. So, we write test first, we pick a test to implement and we build the work product, we execute the test and watch it fail. Then if it fails make little change iteratively till test is passed, run the test, watch it pass, then continuously look out for change, improve the code and always allow the code to be the uh, continuously improve and it should not degenerate. Eliminate duplication, go for code optimization and if any tests are broken try to address by improving the code. This is what we are doing in test press development stages. Finally, by involving the customer we are going to write down the test scenarios and test cases. By involving the customer after we identify the test scenarios for the user stories, we conduct lot of tests and once it is accepted we baseline it. So, advantages of uh, acceptance test driven development or test first approach is close collaboration, we see concrete working software, we build trust and confidence among team members to exchange their best practices, customer is totally in control and we evolve a shared language among the different stakeholders. So, tests are shared with a very good understanding, tests as a specification we maintain it and specification the on coding tests which we have written themselves may be acting as specifications. Means when the implementation take place designer and developer are considering test cases as their requirements rather than any design document. In summary, in test driven development we write tests not as an afterthought to ensure our code works, but instead 
as just part of the every day, every minute way of building software. Instead of writing our detailed design specification on paper, we write them in code. Instead of first striving to perfectly design a system on paper, we use test to guide our design. We evolve the code, we evolve the product and deploy it. So, with this we come to the end of this session on agile methods with scum approach. So, like this we evolve the product using the scrum test uh, the first approach and scrum approach and extreme programming, paid programming and continuous integration by involving the teams above processes. All these are hallmark of the agile software development using scrum approach. Thank you.